Alright Spartans, how you doing and welcome back to Warhammer 3. So, you will probably know by now that there is a third Legendary Lord that will be available for the faction of Kislev. And who is that? Well, it's Boris, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 it's not that Boris. He's too busy having parties. This is Boris Ursus, the legendary Red Tsar of Kislev, the father to Tsarina Katerin the Ice Queen of Kislev. So he will be the third legendary lord playable for the game as Kislev. And well, you also probably know by now, or if you don't, you're going to find out right here, right now, that he will not be available straight away when you get your hands on the game. So you have to do various things, not too difficult, in order to obtain access to him. Once you unlock him, he then will become playable and you can choose to play as him in his own specific campaign. So essentially what you have to do is hold three settlements for 10 consecutive turns. And that is the settlement of Kislev, Erograd and Prague. So as long as you've got those three settlements in your possession, as I say, for 10 turns or more, you will then unlock the actual quest battle that is centered around the Red Tsar himself. And if you then win that quest battle, then you guessed it, you will unlock Boris to play on the game. So today, we are going to fight that specific quest battle so you can see what it's all about. So here we are, guys, on the campaign map as Tsarina Kadarin of Kislev. It is turn 83, and we need to complete the following battle, the Frozen Falls quest battle. If we win it, as you can see there, the reward will be Boris Ursus will return and he will become then available as a legendary lord in this campaign, but also will have his own campaign unlocked for you to play on Warhammer 3. And this is available, I believe, for both legendary lords. So as Kadarin and as Costaltin, you can play out this battle and unlock Boris. Even though he is the daughter of Kadarin, you can still play it as Costaltin as well. So let's teleport to the battle itself. This will give you a flavor, an idea of what to expect from it when you get your hands on it. But also, you'll be able to see some of the some more higher tier units that Kislev have to offer as you progress through the campaign. So we're going to be fighting off against an army of Zinch. Now, I believe the army build is pretty much the same for the quest battle. You know, even if you play it, it will be this sort of very, very similar, if not the identical army build that you can see right in front of you for Zinch. And ultimately, we got to take down three spellcasters in order to sort of, sort of unlock Boris from his frozen state that he's in. So let's jump into the battle map and I'll explain a little bit more once we're on there. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so here you go. So as it says, eliminate the three chaos sorcerers seeking to wrest Boris from the ice. So that is ultimately our main objective here. Let me pause it so you can have a look at the sort of uh, units for Kislev a little bit more without the, obviously, enemy attacking us. Um, so yeah, that is the main objective. Obviously, take out the three sorcerers and then that will unlock Boris from his chaos state, essentially. So we've got some pretty nice units as you progress in the Kislev campaign. And the more I look at them, the more I really do think quite highly of this faction. They could be a really interesting uh, sort of faction to play as in a campaign. They've got some beautiful units, some really nice hybrid units as well. Um, kind of remind me of, and I say this loosely, you know, sort of empire kind of um, units, you know, the, the infantry um missile uh, gun units, the shock cavalry, the heavy cavalry units. They've got that kind of element to them. But as I say, very loosely, don't quote me on that one, but it kind of reminds me of it. So let's start off with the cavalry. So we've got some Griven Legion shock cavalry. Let's put these stats on for them. So as you can see here, armored and shield plus anti-infantry. And that is the same for the second unit of cav that we've got. In fact, let's just go into these guys before we move on because look how beautiful they look. 
those wings behind them. Gorgeous looking units, great looking shields. Very impressive. So as I say, this is a great way not only to experience this quest battle, but just to have a look at some of the much more advanced units that Kislev will have in their roster. So let's go over to the winged lancers. Very similar. And they are the same in terms of both, you know, the Griffin Legion and the winged lancers. Very similar. Both armored and shield. Both anti-infantry. Both shock cavalry. A little bit higher, though, in terms of the Griffin Legion are, as you can see in their stats. A little bit more based sort of health, as well as, you know, look at, the, look at that, all the increases in armor, leadership, um, melee attack, melee defense. So they have got a nice bit of stat increase over the winged lancers, but uh, their speed is just a little, little bit slower. But apart from that, probably the higher tier quality uh, of the Griffin Legion coming through over the winged lancers. Um, so those are the two cavalry units we've got. Now, as I say, we have got our gun uh, units at our disposal. Now, these are sort of, as it says, they're hybrid in a way. They've got great, great or gun and great axe infantry. So they've got that hybrid mechanic about them. Hybrid unit, armored, armor piercing, and decent melee combatant. Kind of again, and this is me going way back because, I'm, as I say, I'm not too up to date with my mechanics with Warhammer. But they remind me a little bit of kind of the Lothen and Sea Guard units where they were the hybrid spear and uh, missile units that the High Elves had. Kind of that mechanic reminds me a little bit of them. But again, very loosely, I quote me on that one. But yeah, these are called the uh, Stretzlai. Oh, Stretzlai? Yeah, Stretzlai? Yeah, Stretzlai. Um, so those, we've got three units of them. And then if we go over here, we've got the Ice Guard, the Sword Variants. So again, hybrid. Bow and dual sword infantry, hybrid units, anti infantry with the frostbite mechanic as well. As you can see, this intense cold cuts into the flesh and burns the foe's extremities, greatly reducing their speed. So that's a ability that they have got in their arsenal. We've also got the ice guard with glaives. Now these have got sort of because of their glaive um, sort of weapons they've got that enables them to become armor piercing. Anti-Large, also a hybrid unit, bow and glaive infantry with that frostbite ability again. Lovely mechanics the Kislev units have got here. A lot of variation, lots of options to you to be able to use at your disposal on the battlefield. So yeah, lovely. Ice Guard with glaives. And then we've got the Armoured Cossars. Cossars. So these are pistol and axe infantry. So a little bit again of that hybrid variation. Armoured and shield special ranged weaponry so they have got we've got three of them i think in this army we have indeed then we've got the czar guard armored and shield you sort of basic not basic but strong sword infantry units to uh, to send into battle we've got uh, two units of them and then we've got the great weapon variant which you obviously can imagine again with that great weapon enables them to be armor piercing as well and anti-infantry so, yeah, they are very nice to have in your front line. Now, looking at the more specialized units, we have got Vadim Kuchev. Now, he is a Patriarch, and he is... Let me go over here. Let me see if I can try and get his abilities for you so you can see that. Uh, da, 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 battle prayers. So, this unit can learn prayers to support allies and defeat foes in battle. He's got three abilities to him. He's got the um, active regeneration uh, spell or ability, which will help with his hit points. He's got then the ability to activate Urson's Roar, which gives him a charge bonus of 36%, plus leadership of 8. And then he's got Potion of Healing, which is again an active ability of regeneration for his hit points against combatants so again this is very much a unit you're going to send into melee combat to be in the front line to help with uh, your infantry units to support in combat now we have got more of these spellcasters here this is the Evelana uh, Bebchuk and she's a spellcaster she's armored and armor piercing so she can hold her own in, fi in, in the fight in combat as well but obviously you want to probably utilize her more for her spells She's got the Augment Spell of Swift Wing, which will give a charge bonus of plus 40% and speed of plus 25%. She's got a lovely Vortex Spell, which is a large explosion area, obviously causing damage and frostbite. And then we've got the Law of Tempest, which is expanding moving forward area of effect spell. 
against the enemy. And then it is, so you can see that, that damage of 24 per second. Interesting, there's an area of effect spell. And then we've got the Hailstorm, a bombardment spell. I always love a bit of bombardment spells in, in Warhammer. Medium strike area, damage, obviously, exposure damage of 30 on there, and a range damage of 36. And then over here, she can summon a Snow Leopard, which is very good against single combatants. Or I think it's I think it's anti large the uh, the snow leopard is. We'll look, we'll look at that when we we summon him in a minute. And then we've got challenging staff, challenging staff which is a augment spell. Um, and again, it's uh, it's active. It's, I don't know what she what that one does particularly. Um, or, de or decreases cooldowns by minus fifteen percent. There we go. That's what it will do. Four is on that. And then we've got Zarina herself. So she is again a kind of a spellcaster, armor piercing, armored, decent in melee combat, and very similar to obviously the spellcaster wizard over there. But she has got a little bit different spell. She can do the law of ice, a, breath, a, a sort of breath spell, which again uh, causes damage and frostbite on contact. She's got death frost, which is a direct damage spell of about you know you can see there damage per second of between 34 and 67 points each second when cast and it's obviously again as you can see strong versus character causes damage to combatants we've got the ice sheet spell law of ice a hex spell minus 25 percent on charge speed and speed and then we've got the law of ice we've got the heart of winter a direct damage spell of you can see different phases that will be cast and the damage increasing as well as the speed debuff and then over here, we have got Frostfang, an active ability, an explosion, which again will cause damage to the surrounding area, 29 uh, points. Uh, and then we've got the Snow Leopard summoning again. And then we've got an active ability of being able to increase our leadership around a certain area of effect. So hopefully I've explained them okay. Probably not. I'm not the best when it comes to sort of mechanics of Warhammer 3. You know, there's other YouTubers that can do a much better job than me. But it hopefully gives you an idea of what to expect with Kislev. Protect right, okay, let's begin this battle and let's battle. start getting some units into position. So we'll put our Tsar Guard forward on the front line over there. Now we'll take forward Zarina and Vadim to support on that center ground over there. On the left-hand flank, we're going to use these guys, the Armored Kassars, to start supporting on the left. And they can fire down. In fact, no. We'll get our units of Griffin Legion to go down there to take them out quickly. They are they are obviously anti-infantry. They can take them out very quickly and get these units of Karsars to just uh, support against this unit of uh, Screamers over there. But you'll see they're ripping through already. Ripping through them. And get those screamers dealt with now. Put them out. We don't want them to get involved with the screamers. Give him a shot. Give him a shot. Give him a shot. Look at that. Damage trying to kick in now. Starting to waver. The fact they're armored as well and shielded, they're not a problem. They'll be taken care of very quickly, those screamers will. And there they are. They're disintegrated. They've gone. And there go the pink hoes. Lovely stuff. They have been dealt with very easily. So we'll do the same again down here. Using, using missile infantry to support the winged lancers and they go for a charge against those pink eyes oh, in fact look at this i forgot to show you the bear calf how could i the war bears the war bear riders what the hell i forgot to show you these wonderful beasts anti-large armor piercing armored and again beautiful looking uh, units another unit of sort of cavalry bear calf so you've got them as well anti-large instead of anti-infantry like the other two units are of, of shot calf all right, start firing just a second. Let the cavalry do their work. 
So you can see this is kind of a staged battle. Um, they are spread across the map, the armies of Zinchar. So we have to sort of take them out little by little, bit by bit. So we'll take these units of Ice Guard Glaives forward. Again, they're hybrid bear infantry units, so they can take out these blue horrors in a second. Put the bear cav over there. So yeah, dart with. So we'll get the cav going a little bit forward. Put them into the tree line over there so they can hide. Just for the right moment to pounce upon the enemy. And we'll bring these units again forward to uh, start hindering the uh, lines of uh, blue horrors over there. Problem is, if they see us go in, they'll probably see us and we won't be able to be hidden, actually. That's the problem. Unless we can go in. Can we, we hidden now? Are we hidden? They're probably going to see us, actually. What are you? Or oh, great gun infantry. Great axe and gun unit, units. Right, okay. Well, they can go... They can go over here. In the centre. Oh, this scene is... Damn you. Come on, chaps. Come on, come on. I'm just, I'm just concerned about these Chaos Knights over there. It's a lovely charge, so it's an absolutely beautiful charge. Numbers are dropping very, very quickly. They're ripping through them. But here come the Chaos Knights. Pull them back. Right, hold, hold here. Hold, hold, hold. have not been too bad. It's still pretty much intact. Here come the Chaos Knights. Give them a volley. Come on. Give them a volley. Come on. Come on. In fact, they are shielded as well. They're okay. They can hold. They're armoured more, more than shielded, sorry. But they can hold the ground against these Chaos Knights. Come on. Let's go. I'll counter charge him in a second. They're doing a wonderful job of standing their ground against these Chaos Knights. Come on. Can't get through. Can get through there. I can pull them through. I can't. Push them through. Push them through. Pink blue holes have gone. Oh, they're actually they're still, they're still there, but they're wavering. Come on. Give me that infantry support. Look at the bear cab going down this way as well. Let's move him. we doing over here pink horrors are still there with his bloody chaos knights come on Let's see if we can oh we can get a wrath of bear no nah, it's not put no worth it not worth it wing lancers, wing lancers can come back Right, come on. Give them a volley. These 
spawn will go down pretty quick as you can see the house is dropping rapidly come on come on come on oh that's gorgeous they've dropped very quickly it's this it's this right side i'm concerned about if you can try and get through the, the chaos knights come on push through They're anti-large. If you can deal with this cavalry, he's bet these bear cav can. They're uh, pushing now. The yeah, Chaos Knights are starting to pull back. Bear cav, come on. So we're getting close now to the first sorcerer over there. Come on. Keep going. We need our wing lancers to go in against these pink horrors, really. The bear cav can deal with the, the chaos knights. Come on, come on. Yes. Beautiful bear cav. Well done. That's making them route very quickly. Lovely. That anti large kicking in now against the chaos knights. It was difficult, but we've pulled through. And the uh, yeah, the wing glance isn't too bad over there actually. Right, let's go with Zarina. She can start to. Uh, ooh, he's starting to cast. He's starting to cast. He's starting to cast. Get that patriarch out. Got a damage spell on him. Need the patriarch to go and support Katarina over there. Okay, okay. Who over here? Who's over here? Sorcerer's been slain. Good. We're on. We'll, we'll go. We'll all go here. So we're going to the right flank. We've got another sorcerer over there. I don't know. Who we got? We've got. Yeah, we have got our spellcaster support. So we'll go with that. Oh shit! What's this behind us? That's not what I want to see. A bloody chaos chariot. And we've got a soul grinder coming. Oh, great. What's this behind us as well? Another chaos chariot. Get the ranged artillery on him. Come on. Come on. Yes. Beautiful. Start with. Now I'm concerned about his soul grinder. He's firing already. Damn it. Where's the bear cab? I don't know where the bear cab have gone. I don't know over there. So Katarina's done a good job over there. We've dealt with that chariot as well. Let's move forward onto this sorcerer over there. Yes. 
Gonna move okay over there. The soul grinder. Come on. With some extra base damage. He's a tough cookie. Spellcaster, come back, come back, come back. We are winning the combat, though, against him. He's just really got a lot of HP, base HP to deal with. That's the problem. So we'll push on these two remaining sorcerers in a second. Once we're done with his soul grinder. Come on, what have you got? What have you got? What have you got? What have you got? What have you got for me? This is anti large He's Snow Leopard. Probably don't need him now, but... Uh, go and get him. I'm sure he's anti large He is. Yes, come on. Finish him off. We're surrounding the man. The beast, whatever he is, this monster. There he goes. Good job, lads. Well done. Let's go. Let's get that second sorcerer down. The battle's not done yet. There's still more to come. Let's quickly move, though. Scream is taken care of again. Probably taking too many units down this middle ground, actually. I think I needed more on the right hand side to support that right push. Probably. I think they were a bit more exposed, but not a problem. They should be able to hold their own. They've got some decent units over there on the right hand side. Let's keep pushing. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What have got here? Another spellcaster. Unit of blue horrors over there that the uh, wing lancers could deal with. Take him on the right over there. Yeah, he's already beginning to cast. Yes. I was gone the wrong bloody way. Damn it. Summon, 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 summon. And we've also got some units being attacked down there in a minute. I'm going to need to sort them out. Let's come to attackers over here. What are these? Some more pink horrors. And a couple of exalted flamers as each. Wonderful. Just what I want to see. Get the bear cav round. Not a problem, no. We'll deal with him. Please don't miscast.
Pull them out. Pull them out. Get the vortex going. Yeah, that should be that, that, them dealt with. So let's bring these cavalry back round. Give them a nice charge bonus against the sorcerer. Gone. Bear Cav, how are we doing with these flamers? Oh, they are holding their own big time. Let's go, let's go, let's just absolutely surround them. Now they're starting to drop pretty significantly. So close with this next uh, sorcerer here. Come on. Can't we really take my eyes away from this side of the battle yet? Starting to pay the price. Starting to crumble. Bear Cav doing a great job. There he goes. Just the other one, please. Same again. about my wing glances here. They're really quite low now in HP. Come on. Sons of yes, that's it. On the march. Get rid of this exalted one again. Make war. And then that's their, that's their job done on the right flank. They've done a wonderful job. They're taking a battering, but they've got it. Great. Well done, lads. You've earned your praise. You've earned your valor in battle today. At last, Boris is pretending he stirs yet. There is hope for the motherland yet. Great. Okay, let's go. Let's make this final push now. That's free Boris. We've done it. We've done it. That's it. It's your chain mount kicking in here, ladies and gentlemen. Final charge over there. There we go. We've done it. Close victory. But we've got it. Yes. Well done. So once the quest battle is complete, you are victorious and Boris is freed. You've then got four possible outcomes for him. Essentially, you could send him to one of the three settlements that you have to control for at least 10 turns in order to enable the quest battle to begin. So if you send him to Prague over there, or to, uh, where is it now, over Edingrad over there, or the mainland of Kislev, the capital of Kislev, if you send him to one of those three regions, he would then form his own faction of the Ursan Revivalists. And he would then control that territory, immediately become military allies with you, and essentially become another power on the map to work alongside you in the campaign. Or the final option is to basically be that he would join your faction direct, and then you could be able to recruit him as a legendary lord into Kislev's own army itself. So you've got those four choices, and then after that, it's up to you what you do with it and where you take Boris or if you control him or not. It's all down to you. But ultimately, the main thing is now that once Boris is unlocked, you can then play your own faction as him on the campaign itself. And if you haven't already, I have done a video of Boris's faction to check out for the first few turns of his campaign to again get a flavor of what to expect from him in the game. 
And as always, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do drop it a like. And until next time, take care and farewell.